Imagine you have two bags placed in front of you. Bag A has three red balls and one blue ball. Bag B has one red ball and three blue balls. Now, suppose someone blindfolds you and randomly picks one of the two bags. So, each bag has a one out of two chance, or 50% chance, of being selected. Next, from the selected bag, one ball is picked at random and it turns out to be red. You are told this result, that the chosen ball is red, but you still don't know which bag it came from. Now comes the big question. What is the probability that the red ball came from bag A? This is what Bayes' theorem is all about. Let me tell you the main intuition behind Bayes' theorem. See, initially, when there was no outcome, meaning when no ball was selected, we had no prior information about which bag would be picked. So both bag A and bag B were equally likely with a one out of two chance each. But once we actually saw the outcome, that the ball turned out to be red, we gained new information. And this information makes us update our belief. We might think that instead of still thinking both bags are equally likely, we will now lean more towards bag A, because it is the bag with a higher chance of producing a red ball, right? This updating of probabilities based on fresh evidence is exactly the heart of Bayes' theorem. But now, how to calculate this probability value using maths? This is the well-known Bayes formula you might have seen many times. But I doubt that you hardly know what is going on in this formula and how we even came up with this formula. Let me show you using a simple Venn diagram. Imagine two overlapping circles, one for event A, which tells that even A has occurred, and one for event B, which tells that even B has occurred. The overlapping area, or this region, represents the cases where both A and B happen together, and we call it as event A intersection with event B. Suppose you want to find the chance of some event A happening, but you already know that another event B has happened. This means we are focusing only on the B circle, and inside that circle, the overlapping area is the part that also has A. So the probability of A given B is just asking, out of everything in the B circle, how much is also in A? That's exactly what conditional probability means. Therefore, the formula will now be simple. The conditional probability of A given B, which we represent like this, is equal to the probability of both A and B happening together, divided by the probability of just B happening, and that's it. Likewise, the conditional probability of B given A, which we represent like this, is equal to the probability of both A and B happening together, divided by the probability of just event A. Great. Now what can you make out from both of them? We see that the probability of the intersection P of A intersection B can be written in two ways. From here, it can be written like this, and from here, it can be written like this. Therefore, we can equate both of them to get this. Finally, divide both sides by P of B to isolate P of A given B. This gives us the proper form of the Bayes theorem. Awesome. Now I will show you one more magic. Coming back to our original problem of finding the probability of choosing bag A given the outcome was a red ball, we can use this formula to find the values but I will show you a nice tree diagram method which is mostly used when dealing with problems related to Bayes' theorem. Draw a small circle representing the root of the tree and then two branches to the right, like this. At the first branching point, label the top branch, bag A with probability one half, and the bottom branch, bag B, with probability one half, like this, because initially both of them are equally likely to be chosen. Now, from the bag A branch, draw another two small branches like this, one labeled red with probability three quarters and the other labeled blue with probability one quarter, because bag A has three red balls and one blue ball. Then from the bag B branch, draw two small branches, 
one labeled red with probability 1 over 4, and the other labeled blue with probability 3 over 4 because bag B has one red ball and three blue balls. Now when we ask, what is the probability that the ball came from bag A, given that it is red? We are restricting ourselves only to those outcomes where the ball is red. That means we throw away the blue outcomes completely and only look inside the world of red balls. Now, in that red world, there are two possible ways the ball could have appeared. Along the path where we have bag A, then red, whose probability will be the product of one-half times three-fourths, which equals three-eighths. And the next is along the path where we have bag B, then red, whose probability will be the product of one-half times one-fourth, which equals one-eighth. Together, these two cases make up all the red outcomes, so the total probability of red is three-eighths plus one-eighth equals four-eighths. But we want the share of this red world that only belongs to bag A. That is why we take the part from bag A, which is three-eighths, and divide it by the whole red part, which is four-eighths. This gives three over four. So at the beginning, before we knew anything about the ball we picked, we had an equal 50% chance of having chosen either bag A or bag B. However, after observing that we picked a red ball, our belief about the source of the ball changed. We updated our probability. And now, based on the new information, we calculated that the probability of the red ball coming from bag A increased to 3 divided by 4, or 75%. Now, if we want to find the same using formula, we apply Bayes' theorem. The probability of bag A given red is equal to the probability of red given bag A multiplied by the probability of bag A and divided by the total probability of red. Substituting the values, probability of red given bag A is 3 over 4, probability of bag A is 1 over 2, and the total probability of red is 3 over 8 plus 1 over 8 which is 1 over 2, so the final result is 3 over 4, or 75%. Okay, let us level up our gear. We will introduce three events. Suppose we have three machines, A, B, and C. Machine A produces 25% of all items. B produces 35%, and C produces 40%. But the quality of the machines differs. 5% of machine A items are defective, 3% of machine B items are defective, and only 1% of machine C items are defective. Now suppose we close our eyes and randomly pick an item, and it turns out to be defective. The big question is, what is the probability that this defective item actually came from machine C? Can you solve it? We can solve this problem using a tree diagram. First, draw three main branches for the three machines. A with probability 25 over 100, B with probability 35 over 100, and C with probability 40 over 100, since these are the chances of picking an item from each machine. Note that sum of all of them is 1 because together, they cover the entire production of items. Now, from each machine branch, draw two smaller branches, one for defective and one for non-defective. For machine A, the defective branch has probability 5 over 100 and the non-defective branch 95 over 100. For B, defective is 3 out of 100 and non-defective 97 out of 100. For C, Defective is 1 over 100 and non-defective 99 over 100. To find the probability of both choosing a machine and getting a defective item, we will throw away the paths leading to non-defective cases and only focus on defective ones. So, for A and defective, it is 25 over 100 times 5 over 100, which equals 1.25%. For B and defective, it is 35 over 100 times 3 over 100, which equals 1.05%. For C and defective, 
it is 40 over 100 times 1 over 100, which equals 0.4%. Adding these gives the total defective probability of 2.7%. Finally, Bayes' theorem tells us that the chance that the defective came from C is the path of C and defective probability divided by the total defective probability, that is 0.4 divided by 2.7 which is about 14.8%. Now, just for fun, we will also solve the cases where this defective item actually came from machine A and for B. Now, Bayes' theorem tells us that the chance that the defective came from A is 1.25 divided by 2.7, which is about 46.3%. For B, it is 1.05 divided by 2.7, which is about 38.9%. So, after updating our beliefs, we see that even though C makes the largest share of items overall, a defective item is most likely to have come from A, followed by B, and least likely from C. This is because machine A makes fewer items than C, but its defect rate is much higher, so it ends up adding more defective pieces than C. Now it's your turn to solve this problem, and let me know your answer in the comments. It takes a lot of effort to make these educational contents, so if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!